Listen, tonight, I'm gonna teach a message that we titled, when I say we, I'm terrible at titles, so I send my notes uh, to my executive team and then to Britta and Dustin, and they, they're the ones that put them in the U version, and then I always ask for comments, because as they read them, you know, I put it together, but sometimes they have comments that really help, you know, and, and a, a thought I hadn't thought about. And so the, 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 the title that I liked that they gave me a few um, was The Real But Uncomfortable Gospel. That we need to understand that the American church that we know doesn't necessarily make it a biblical church. Or let me say this. The American believer is oftentimes not a biblical believer. We have, we have Americanized the gospel to fit our lifestyle instead of seeking God to fit into his world. And we take the gospel and we, we, we make it like a buffet and I'll take a little of this and none of that and I don't like this part and I, I think this is biblical. We listen to false teachers and, and, and really that's what they are to say things like, and I'm harping on this because I think we really need to get this in our hearts, to harp, that harp and say, well, this part is not for today. Folks, that is such a dangerous place to be. And who is God in here or on the earth that can dictate and tell, tell us that God didn't mean what he said? We gotta stop listening to that. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now. You gotta stop listening to that junk. It'll deceive you, you'll be a castaway. You'll be off on an island by yourself angry because no one wants to listen to what you think is right. The Bible is forever settled. We don't get to pick and choose. And anybody that says anymore, well, that's not for today, is a heretic, it's false, it's a lie. Why did God give us his eternal word and why didn't he tell us somewhere in the scriptures, now this part was for 2,000 years ago, this part don't even listen to, don't worry about it. You got people telling us the Old Testament's done, we don't need it but yet we learn from it, and, and it is the gospel. I mean, God, God, God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is the one that, that gave these folks the ability to write and write down exactly what God know, knows we need. Everything you need is in the scriptures. If we just follow the, the scriptures, God will lead and direct your paths. You know, I prayed with someone today for healing. I was just out and about at a place, and, and, and man, I said, I'll pray for, for healing, and, 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 and we, we, we just do it wherever we're at. We, God is wherever we are, and, and God is everywhere at one place, but you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, so you, you bring God wherever you go, but don't ever look at the Bible and you think you can pick and choose what you're going to act on or not and think you're obedient. Romans 8, 31 says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? So here's what I want to say to everybody in here and everybody watching. Because folks, you know there's more people watching than in here. There's so many more people watching online. And here's what I want to say. Every one of us must be born again. For anybody to have a relationship with God, you must be born again. And have you ever thought that you aren't good enough for God? That he will not save you? Do you ever feel as if salvation is for everyone else but you? And if God gave his son for you, he isn't going to hold back his salvation. And one of the things that, um, of the thoughts I, I received was, so many are caught between clear biblical teaching and what the culture pressures people to believe. And so they try to find some type of compromise. I wanna say this to you. There is no compromising the word of God. We can compromise on a deal. We can compromise, you know, you want to go left, I want to go right. We want to eat at this restaurant. You want to eat that one. We can compromise all that. But we do not compromise the word of God. The pressure of the culture is enormous right now. And you notice it's falling apart. And we need to understand that there is no compromise. Either we accept the entire Bible or we accept none of it. There is no in between. We want to follow the parts that seem easy at times and dismiss those parts that seem a little bit more harder. There's no in between. I don't know how many people over the years, I can't even count them, 
that when they're asking questions or talking and we say, hey, that's not biblical, they'll say, I don't care, God told me. No, wait a minute, you don't, you don't care that his word is forever settled? But God somehow spoke to you and told you to go against the Bible? It's a lie, it's deception, that's the devil talking to you. Oh no, it's God. No, you can't distinguish between the devil and God because how do I know when the devil's talking to me? When it doesn't line up with this. That's the only way. So as an American believer, you gotta start knowing this a little bit more. We all do. But you're not gonna learn this by just putting it under your pillow at night and saying, teach me, Lord. The Bible says we study to show ourselves approved. We study to show ourselves quiet. Because how many of y'all know, our, this little tongue that the Bible talks about, it's like a little ember. Okay, it can start a big old fire. And we, we've got to be careful. So as seen in Scripture, the body of Christ, the church, is not called to live like the world. We have a responsibility to carry out the commands of Scripture. And this calls for risking everything to follow Christ. The American church, or the way of American Christianity, must rise to oppose modern pressures by risking their comfort and popularity. We need to live a life of servitude towards the will of the Father. That's what God wants us all to do. And folks, it's not about being popular. It's about learning to fight. And, and it's willing, the willingness to risk everything. And I, I've said this only a couple times, but I'll say it again. When, when the pandemic started, and I, I mock it because the way it was managed was the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my lifetime. The most horrific. Started with President Trump when he locked down the nation. And I thought that's the worst decision a president's ever made in the history of America. Because the lives that were destroyed, over theory, no facts. Then we find out that Grisham, who stole Christmas, that her and Dr. Disgrace, there was no science. It was just all made up. They had no idea what they were doing, but yet they punished us. And I wanna say this and I won't get on it anymore. If you watch her commercial, she comes off real sweet and nice, she can act. But where's the lecturing one that treated us with disdain? That thought she could get on TV and lecture us week after week after week because we're not listening to her. Who are you that we should listen to you anyway? But now, she's playing all nice and she's gonna give you some money. She's gonna try to buy your vote. Remember what I said, the oppressed always vote in their oppressors for a few pieces of silver. We will betray our God and vote for people that are, that are wicked. Okay, that's it, that's enough. And see, if I was to say those things and this church was in Texas, everybody would be like, no big deal. We say it here, we're, we're an outlier. We're an anomaly. I can't believe that preacher preaches like that because you're so Americanized that you have no, you don't endure sound doctrine. We, 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 we either endure it or we don't. And, and a lot of people can't endure it. They just want, they don't want, they don't want anything. That's why those Christians say, oh, I didn't come to church and listen to politics. Politics is destroying our country because we got the wrong people in office. And so, so the church without the gospel is misdirected and ineffective and that's what's happened. That's why they attacked the church and knew they could because they knew they, we wouldn't stick together. Some of us did, most of us didn't. The dangerous balancing between the world and the spirit leads to complacent believers who believe it's all about them instead of being all about God's will. If the devil can't get us to be heretical, he will get us to be fanatical. And some people are. You see churches that are fanatical. They run, scream, jump, and shout. Now, I guess there's a place for that, but how does that help anybody? And I tell people all the time, you wanna do Christian aerobics? Go home, go to a class. But this isn't the gym. And a lot of those people, I've asked them that run, jump, shout, want to be, I said, do you do that at home? 
Oh, I never do that at home. I'm like, isn't that strange? You just wait till the people's around. So what, what are you trying to get them to see? How spiritual you are? Because that's what it's all about. Look at me. We're supposed to be looking at God, not each other. We're supposed to be looking at, 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 the, at the law of liberty, the, the scriptures. But he'll try to get us to act crazy. First of all, he wants to deceive you. But hopefully we, we know enough of the word not to be deceived. And this is why Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, but to be sure that everything is done properly and in order. I had no idea what Elder George was going to say. I don't ask. I trust him. I've known him for 20 years. He's been in this church for 38, 39 years. Like he's a pillar. He's like a founding person. I just know him. I know his character. And he wouldn't get up and say anything that was just like, I'm like, oh, wow, that's not very godly and that's not very biblical and that's, wow. All God was trying to say is, you gotta listen. We have to listen to him. If we want our healing, if we want strength. I mean, that's an exhortation. It, 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 it was, I mean, he gave a word that, and that's how words are supposed to be, encouraging. Some people like to give words to people that are gloom and doom. If you don't stop this, God's gonna get you and he's gonna kill you and he's gonna, and it's like, what, what, what? I mean, and, and how do you know that? We say all kinds of stuff to people that probably shouldn't say. But we gotta do things properly and in order. And the enemy will attempt to get the church to act crazy. And then we lose our ability to influence others to Christ. The American church has abandoned the word of God to teaching that is watered down and has nothing to do with lordship. It's all about just go live your life, enjoy it, and so what? For instance, Proverbs 29, two says, when the godly are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked are in power, they groan. How many are groaning when you put gas in your car? How many are groaning when you go to the grocery store now? I mean, look at the prices of food. I mean, it, 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 it's groaning. Do you know why we're groaning? Because the wicked are in charge. That, that, that's the bottom line. I'm gonna tell you guys this, and I, and, I, and I just ragged Trump. I thought he made a terrible decision, one of the worst ever. But I never groaned when I went to the gas pump. And you know how fickle the church is because we don't believe in sound doctrine? People said, I can't vote for him. I don't like his personality. Really? Yeah. What does that matter? What about policy? See, that's how we, that's how we look at, well, I don't like church because they preach this. Who, why do we care about if, if his personality's not very nice? I didn't care. You know what I cared about? I was paying less than two bucks at the gas station. When I filled up my truck, it was 50. Now it's $113. Milk wasn't $8 back then either. See, we, we've, got to, we've got to understand biblical. Well, you know, I'm this and I'm that. I don't care what color you are in here, what your economic status is. We either believe this or we don't. This is not for white people, black people, Spanish people, Pacific Islander, Native American. This is for people, period. God's not black, white, Hispanic, even though the Spanish folks say we're going to speak Spanish in heaven. I don't, it's just, it, it, I don't know a lot of Spanish, but it, it always sounds good, right? I mean, it's just, it's just pleasant to listen to, I think. So maybe we will. But you know, when we get to heaven, I'm going to know every language. I'm going to be able to speak anything I want. But the gospel is for every one of us. And you and I need to decide if we're on God's side or do we say we love God, but hold back part of our lives, which is not lordship. It's not lordship. We need to be biblical followers of Christ. Again, not picking and choosing what scriptures we will believe and do and what scriptures we will not believe and do. Dangerous place to be in. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter seven, if you have them. I'm, I'm going back in time where we all used to have Bibles. Now, pull out your phones, would you, and follow along. <laughs> I want you to hear that. I quote this, I, I reference this scripture all the time. Because I'm going to say it again. 
It's probably the scriptures that scare me the most. That put the fear of God in me a little bit. I was talking to my brother the other day and I told him that. He goes, you know, it does the same thing to me. So I want you to hear it. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only, everybody say only. only. Online say only. <laughs> only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. How many people tell me have told you you've heard? Maybe you've said it. Ah, oh, God understands why I'm not doing something he asked. And Jesus just said, you're going to say, Lord, because you know him as Lord, but you didn't receive him as Lord. You knew who he was, but you never submitted. That's why it's so scary, because he's talking to people who believe. He's not talking to the lost, because the lost is not going to say, Lord, Lord. He's talking about people who, who are so happy with themselves. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my team, it's so funny. I don't believe George even knew what I was going to preach today. And then he gets up and says, the Lord gave him a thought, a word. But anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So what's he saying? People are going to say, hey, I did this, I did. We think we can give God our resume. That's why it's dangerous to be like, God, I did this for you, 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 why won't you do this? That's not the way God operates. We don't get to manipulate God. We don't get to tell him how great we are. We're supposed to be telling him how great he is in our lives. And so what happens to people and the American kind of gospel that we are buying into and I bought into it. I'm, I'm, re, I'm rereading and, and relearning. I said, God, I don't want to be just this, this figure that gets up there and preaches a message and then leaves and doesn't care about the people. The shepherd should smell like the sheep. If there's too many shepherds. They walk on, walk off, never talk to anybody. They don't smell like sheep. But we, I don't want to be, I just don't want to be a place where we come and go and nobody gets help, no one gets healed, no one gets set free, no one gets saved. But people will call him Lord and do nothing he says and think they're okay. This tells you you're not okay. So go do what you want, what you think is fun, where you can get some recognition and just ignore the rest of it and see what happens when you stand before the Lord. And you look at him and say, Lord, and he's like, you knew me as Lord, but you didn't obey me as Lord. You knew me as Lord, but you kept, you kept the Lordship over your own life. You're the Lord of your own life, so save yourself. You can't do it. You can't save yourself. And the only reason I'm teaching these kinds of messages is because, dear God, help us to not think we're worshiping you and, then, and do our own thing, and then we die and go to hell. People say, well, once saved, always saved. Yeah, but there, there's a caveat to that. That See, the American church, and I know I'm ragging the American church because I think we've, we, in, our, in our complacency, in our prosperity, we've just forgotten God, and I saw it for two and a half years. When I saw Christians as afraid as the world, I'm like, what did we not teach? When Christians were just as afraid as the world, and when they listened to the media more than they listened to the word of God, and they listen to these crazy people who have been found to be liars. Caused us to be fearful. I'm like, what does that say for the scripture? So what happened to a lot of people just threw the Bible out and said, I believe, it, I believe and agree with them. Yeah, but that's not what my Bible teaches. Well, we shouldn't have church. We should just, we should be a good neighbor. Oh my gosh. It's so, it, it's so, it's so unscriptural that is. But we let the world say it. 
And then some so-called preachers said it. And we found that the church was lacking. We should have been packing this place out the whole time. That's what should have happened. Oh, pastor, you just don't care about people. No, I care enough about your eternity to tell you the truth so you go to heaven. And if Jesus said close the church, then we should have closed it, and he never said it. He said the church won't close until he comes back and gets it. Then, okay. But I watched so-called people that say they love the Lord, and they went against the church. They weren't criticizing the governor. They were criticizing the church. Who does that? Only because we believed in our freedom that not the Constitution or a governor or a government, a president, president given, God gave me freedom. Amen. And I, I, I'm, just, I'm just exhorting us, let's learn because if there's another catastrophe, say the mark of the beast is on the horizon. We're going to lose so many because they're going to say the same thing. We should just listen to them. I'm hungry. God wants me to eat, not not taking the mark of the beast, he don't. And the reason people are going to do that because they weren't faithful to him from the beginning. See, I truly believe this. When I told my wife, I'm going to stand and fight. I'm not going to put up with this. We're going to sue the governor. She's never going to tell us what to do. And by the way, we got fined by her. We got fined by OSHA. And can I tell you how much we paid any one of those? We didn't pay him nothing. But when I told her, I said, Cynthia, I could get in trouble. I could go to jail. That's what they were telling me at the time. Even my attorney said, it's okay if you go to jail. I'm like, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> but there's some Bubba's in jail. I don't, I don't want to be around no Bubba. I don't want anybody calling me Stephanie. No, I don't want to do that. I'm, uh, mm -mm. <laughs> I have no sense. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the elders saying, I apologize. But I said, we could lose everything. Everything. And her response was, well, if that's what it means to serve God, then we'll lose everything. Because here's what we know. We've been faithful to him with our finances. So if we lost everything, he'll just, we'll just get it right back. You see, that's the confidence you have when you listen to the word of God. You have confidence. God says, don't be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. Right. Well, pastor, you got COVID. Yeah, I did. And folks, I was sick. No doubt it's real. I was sick, sick. My blood pressure dropped so low that the doctor yelled at me on the phone and said, that's great blood pressure for a seven-year-old. He said, so you're getting close to where your system's going to start shutting down. And I'm like, I told my wife, it shuts down, I'm going home. I, that's, that's what I thought. My wife freaked out, but she'll tell you. He just said, that's what it takes. I'll just go home. So I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying none of this is real. The way they managed it was just horrific. And to put fear and instill fear and then have tattletale things. You know, one time they said we were the number one place that people complained about. That's how popular we are. That's how much, listen, that's how much the world is looking over here. They said you were number one for, I don't know for how long, we got more complaints on a, they're not wearing masks. They're not social distancing. It's like they sent spies in. And we didn't care, because I would say it on the T, I would say it on the screen. We're not going to do any of that. What I'm saying to you is either we endure sound doctrine or we don't. And you know what most people can't do, endure sound doctrine. They hear something they don't like and then they run because it doesn't tickle their ears the way they want it to. People get up here and do that all the time. I watch it. But if you think you can ignore God and then die or he comes back and you say, oh, Lord, Lord, didn't we do some great things? And he looks at you and said, are you serious? You did what you wanted to do, but you didn't do anything I wanted you to do. What did you want me to do? Maybe he wanted you to serve. Maybe he wanted you to tithe. Maybe he wanted you to live a little different. Simple stuff. 
but it's the people, the things people ignore because I just want to do something big for God. Why don't we just want to do anything for God? Those people that amaze me, I just want to do something big for God. I understand what they're saying, but it's like, really, I, I, I don't understand it. Why can't we just do something for God? And how do we not know that's not big to somebody else? Like all these people up here praying on our prayer team, they don't get paid here. That's what they do. They're just honoring God. And how do you know the big thing God wanted them to do didn't just happen right now in front of us when they prayed for that person, they prayed for that lady, they prayed for that man. How do we know? See, we see big things, but God says, just obey me where you're at. We need to understand the wicked are in charge of our city, state, and country. That's why we are all groaning. You groan at different times. We have a real enemy out there that still kills and destroys, and he wants to destroy your life. He, remember what I said? If he can't get you to be heretical, he'll get you to be fanatical. And heretical means you don't believe the scriptures. You're deceived from them. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to walk up to the Lord and say, Lord. And he says, ah, oh, man, dude, I have no idea who you are. All you did was make yourself famous. All you did was do what you wanted to do. But you didn't do what I asked you to do. And folks, no one's exempt. When I prayed for those people today, I'm just out and about. I, I, I just think that's what we do as Christians, right? This gentleman told me a story today. I don't think he'd mind me telling it because it was just a great story. He said, he said when all the George Floyd stuff happened, he just got really, not caught up, but mad and he said he was in line and he said he uh he was in line at a, a place to get some food and the lord told him to go to chick-fil-a so he said okay so he was already in line he gets out and goes to chick-fil-a and he said he's sitting there and there's a, a white lady in front of him and she keeps looking at him and he says i was looking for a confrontation he said i was getting madder by the second like who's she looking at she's just looking at this black guy back here think i'm gonna do something this guy served 24 years in the military. He's a good guy. Big too, tough, tough. I, I wouldn't want to take a shot at that title, no. <laughs> and this is what he told me. He's telling me the story. He goes, and I felt so bad, and God was really dealing with me. And I kept thinking, who does this lady think she's looking at? So when I go up there to pay for my food, this guy looks at me and says, man, you don't know anything. That lady that was in front of you, she just, she just blessed you. I said, I bet that crushed you. He said, oh my gosh. I was like, ah. <laughs> Balance. I don't know if you all saw that. Did you see that? Just caught it. Just like. That's a white man's jump right there. Did you see that? <laughs> oh my gosh. I got no sense. That's all there is to it. But you can, we can be deceived and think things that aren't true. Or we can get to the word of God and follow it. Will you make mistakes? Yes. Will you blow it? Yes. Will you sin? Yes. I'm not talking, we're all gonna make mistakes. But God's so loving, he said, I knew you were gonna make them. Just keep going with me. Just figure this out. It may take you a while, but you'll figure it out. And as soon as you figure something out, you'll have something else to work on. See, the word of God is, is like our mirror. And it, it, because it's the truth. And if you want to flip over, if you, how many have a person, how many have a physical Bible? How many all use your phones? <laughs> the phones have it. Okay. I don't know. I just like reading from a physical Bible. But if you go to the book of James, and, or you can follow along on the screen, or you can use your phone, or whatever. James chapter one, if I can find it. I don't even know where it's at. I know it's in the Bible because I read it. <laughs> but listen to this. I, I think it's, it's verses 21 through 25. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God. Humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it is the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You, you must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, 
It is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Wow. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. So the word of God is our mirror. We go look at it and say, Do we, are we a reflection of this? And if we're not, we just change. Just start working on it. Because you know, if, 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 if myself and three other people looked in a mirror and you were watching us and we looked in the mirror and said, man, yeah, we're good, whatever. And then we walk away and we go about five steps and someone says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta go look in the mirror again. Man, you just looked in the mirror. Yeah, but I forgot what I look like. <laughs> and you walk back. You, if you watch this, you would think that person's crazy, right? How does he forget? That's what God is saying. Don't forget what I'm saying. And how you don't forget is do it. Do what you hear. Do what you know when you learn something. Begin to act on it. And then every time you read the word, it's like a reflection. Like, okay, I'm doing that now, God. It's my mirror. And God can do anything. In Genesis 18, 13, and 14, the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Now, I'm a man that's been married a while. I would have answered it like this, God, I don't know, you made her. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, I bet Abraham was like looking at her, looking at God like, I don't know. Because God, where are you gonna be when she gets mad? So then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Because how many of you in here are 50 women? How many of y'all want to have a baby at 50? Yeah, all the hands just immediately went down. So now imagine if you're 60. How many of y'all would want to have a baby at 60? No takers? Because we're going to pray for you and ask for an immaculate conception and see what happens in nine months. How about at 70? Can you imagine? How about 75? How many women say that's not even something I can imagine at 75? Come on. You don't have to be 75, but if you're a woman, you're like, I ain't having no baby at 50, 60, 70. I ain't having no baby after 30-something. And so Sarah laughed because she's like, really? I went through menopause a long time ago. This stuff is over. And God said, well, I'm gonna give you a baby. So she laughed. And God said it this way. Why does she laugh? And then I love this. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Whatever you're facing today, whatever you're going through, you need to keep thinking, is anything too hard for the Lord? And then several long time later, Jeremiah answers it in th Jeremiah 32, 17b. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. That's a word of knowledge for some people in here and watching. Nothing's too hard for him. Sarah laughed because it was like, I'm 75, I ain't having no baby. And then, then she didn't have the baby until she was 90. Yeah, someone was like, oh, can you imagine? Can't even walk at 90. I mean, you're in your, you're in your walker. And you start putting on weight and someone says, what, when you're eating too much, I ain't eating too much. My husband and I, we, we're having a baby. He'd be like, what? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Different strokes. I, mean, come on. I, I know I'm old, but come on. Help a brother out sometime. But I love what God said. Is anything too hard for the Lord? The answer is no. Jeremiah says it. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. And see, and I close with this. We in America and our churches, we preach salvation over lordship. We have it backwards. I hear people talking, preachers, people, I got, man, I, I got 10 people saved. First of all, I ain't getting nobody saved. It's the Holy Spirit who gets the credit. Well, we, try to, we try to get credit. I mean, it'd be different. I did a, I did a crusade, 50,000 people got saved. God moved. But it's crazy when they say, I got 50,000 saved. I can't save nobody. You can't save nobody. God does the saving. 
But here's the thing, and I said it earlier with once saved, always saved, the mentality. If all you do is come for salvation, that's why so many people say nothing ever happened. See, we preach salvation, and God preaches lordship to be saved. So go in your Bibles again, if you would, and I close with this, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Romans 10, 9, and 10. I want you to just listen to it. You can follow along, but listen. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, so at the end, I'll have people lift their hands, because I want you to openly declare that you believe in Jesus. But some people say, no, I want to be a secret service Christian. There's no such thing. Oh, I'm not going to do that because we don't want to humble ourselves ever before God. What will people think? Who cares what someone thinks? Listen, you won't care what people think when you die and you get to go to heaven. You'll just be happy. You won't be like, I wonder what they think now. Hey, I don't see Joe up here yet because Joe's in hell. <laughs> there you go. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What do you have to declare before you're saved? You have to declare his lordship. And we want salvation because all of us want hell insurance, fire insurance. But lordship is another whole thing. And he says, when you tell me I'm in charge of your life, when you Ask me to be Lord of your life, which means he's the boss now. He said, then I'll save you. I'll save you from eternal death. I'll save you from your sin. I'll save you. I'll heal you. I'll strengthen you. Because salvation means healing, deliverance, all those things. And see, what we want to do is just tell people, man, I got 10 people to pray a prayer. But yeah, but did they, did they make Jesus Lord? Because if, if, we, if we don't give him our heart, see, he said, when you believe in your heart, if, if I give... Listen, how many of you have given your heart to another person? And how many, when you gave your heart to them, you just wanted to be around them? You wanted to please them? Nobody? I mean, <laughs> thank you. But think about it. We, we, that's what we do when we, when we have our kids and we think, I, I can't even, I don't even, I mean, we just had them, but I love them. I, I love my daughter, I love my, I don't know. I don't know where this love came from my kids. I don't even know them. They don't know me, but I know I helped make them. And I, and when, I remember holding my son for the first time and like, man, I, I love this guy. I don't even, I mean, I just named him, but I love him. I, I would die for him. Because when you give your heart away, you tend to follow. You tend to want to be around. But all you're doing is looking for insurance you stay away, you don't honor, you don't give, you don't serve, you don't attend church regularly. You, you're just a, you're, you're your own agent. But when we ask Jesus to be Lord of our lives, we're saying, God, I submit my will to yours. Now he knows we're not perfect. He knows we'll make mistakes and at times we'll pull our will back. But then we repent and give him back our will. But so many people just say, ah, I prayed that prayer 20 times and never took effect. Well, I can tell you why. Because you never submitted to his lordship. So why would he do anything in your heart? So I believe when people do that, they're really born again. And I, I don't believe it's that easy to lose it. If you can walk away and tell God you hate him, then it's over. I don't want anything to do with you and you don't listen to him, you don't obey him, then, then you suffer those consequences. But most of us aren't like that. We may get hurt and get mad for a while, but we come back because we know he's the only way. It's what Peter said to him. You have the words of life. Where am I going to go? And so we, we, we need to understand what the Bible actually says. So if you get right with God today, you got to give him your heart. And when I give him my heart, I want to please him. Isn't that what we do? When I married my wife, I wanted to please her. And I think she wanted to please me because she married me. She loved me. You know, if we don't keep that love alive, then we, we, we grow apart. And that's what happens with people in the kingdom. They want his salvation. They just don't want him to tell them what to do ever. Tell me what to do. I've had people accuse me. Who do you think you are? I said, I'm just preaching the gospel. Why don't you say that to God? I'm, I'm not making this stuff up. But they want to attack the messenger. 
can't believe you said that. Well, okay. I said it. I don't know why it's hard to believe. And I say crazy stuff. <laughs> I know I do. Sometimes just to wake people up. Because when everybody's laughing, like, oh, can you believe that? Like, I, I missed what he said. Too late, dude. Wake up. <laughs> Let me go on and I'll close. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Salvation is a byproduct of lordship. We don't teach lordship much because it's not that popular. It's not, it's not that flowery. It doesn't hype you up. And you know, I, I know preachers that hype people up. I, I, I used to preach like that. In my younger days, if you'd listen to tape, you'd be like, who is this guy now and who is that guy? Because I could preach. I mean, when I preach, I preach, I get loud. Some people today call it yelling. Why is he yelling at us? It's called preaching. Duh, come on. <laughs> I mean, I, I could, man, I, I, yeah, I, had, I had to calm myself down because it was hurting my throat. I had to go to a voice thing because my throat was, he's like, dude, you got to learn how to talk. I'm like, well, I can talk. He said, no. So I had to learn to do breathing things. Because I'd like, praise the Lord, hallelujah. God's in the house. You know, you'd be like. <laughs> and then I started thinking, I don't talk like that normally. So I'm going to learn to preach like I talk. So if you were to talk to me later, you'd be like, man, he preaches just sounds the same. But we, we you know, we want to, and then we want to add syllables. And uh, <laughs> that's when you know, I'm not that good, but that's when you know it's a real preacher. And the Lord said, uh, listen to the word. That was me. Now, now I'm not like that no more because I'm, I'm old. And you know what? The reason I say some of those things is just to get you to laugh. It's been a long week already. And sometimes laughter just makes it a little better. Just gives us... Gives us a little something to say, I got something left for the rest of the week. And that's why you come to church, just to get filled up again so you can finish strong in this week. But folks, if you want Jesus in your life, he has to be the boss. He won't take any other seat on the bus. Either he's the driver or he's not on the bus. And that doesn't mean you won't make mistakes, but he forgives those mistakes every time. That doesn't mean you won't sin. But you'll recognize it like, ah, man, honey, I got to fix this. I got to stop. I got to work on this. That's all God wants. But he is the same God that says sin no more. But the power of God in your life that is anything too hard for the Lord. I love that scripture. I just like it. And I love what Jeremiah, when he said, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. So no matter what you're facing, if you'll submit to him, if you'll listen, listen. Have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He'll change your life in a moment of time. And you'll see some light at the end of that tunnel. You'll see some light. God is for you, not against you. I read that. That's, he cares. So let's give them our hearts and say, God, from this moment forward, I'm just going to purpose to please you. I know I won't do it all the time because I'm human, got a sin nature, but God, you know I desire to. God says, okay. It's what I read this weekend in Hebrews 11:6. 6. Sincerely seek him. He didn't say be perfect. He didn't say you wouldn't be without sin. He just says, be sincere in your faith. But we got to do what he asked. He didn't die for the church so we could stay away from the church. And here's what even Christians say. This is what they say, Chris. They, here's what they say. When his wife's standing right next to you, right? It's right there, right behind you too, dude. That's good. No, I'm kidding. I forget what I was going to say now. I started messing with you. No, you didn't mess up. What was I saying? 
Someone help me. What was I saying when I looked at him and said hi? Huh? What? What? Oh, I have no idea. They're not helping me. I just got distracted. But he didn't die for the church. And then people say, I don't like people. You know how many Christians I've heard say that? I don't like being around people. That's why I don't go to church. I'm like, how can you have a heart for God and not like his people? Didn't he say if you don't love the people, you're not a him? See, it's a cop-out. It's deception. It's the heretical thing that they believe. Folks, listen, you don't have to be the greatest people person, but to say I don't go to church because I want to be around people, but who's got your heart? It's not God. Because how are you going to influence people so you don't care if they die and go to hell or get, go to heaven? You mean, so I don't want to be around them? It's too big. What, what is too big? Why is only church too big? I've never had anybody really look at me and say, my house is just too big. My car is too big. My bank account is way too big. And if you say that, come talk to me. I'll help you with that one. But I might as well own what people say anyway. But think about it. Let's just give God our lives. And let's say, God, we'll work out this salvation with fear and trembling. We will. Because you have to work it out. Because you're not going to be perfect. Thank God that he didn't ask me to be perfect. Because I'd have been fired a long time. But he knows this. When it comes to the kingdom, I'll stand and fight. I'll die on that hill. I'll do whatever it takes to put the kingdom first. And people, without people, it's the church. You're the church, not the building. This building can become anything. You're the church. So why is the church not like the church? Oh, there's a bunch of hypocrites there. You're not even born again to talk like that crud. Because if you were really born again, you would realize you're just one as, as you're probably worse than some of the ones you're claiming are hypocrites. Because you're judging everybody and saying they're all bad. But that's the heart of God. Let's give our hearts to him. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here. I thank you for teaching us. Thank you for helping us. I thank you, God, for your word that it rings true in our hearts and minds. And Father, those that are here and watching, they do endure sound doctrine. So bless their lives. Show yourself strong. There's nothing too hard for you, God. No matter what a person's facing, move in their lives today as they submit their will to your will. It's all about lordship. Either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. How you doing, man? You like an Albuquerque? He's from Ohio, right? From Ohio? This, he's from Ohio. He just, we just hired him. He came from Ohio, him and his wife. They have a brand new baby. And he can sing. Look, it looks cool too, man. I don't know how you guys do it. I never look cool. You look cool. Oh, you're not trying to keep, you're trying to keep with me. You lost, dude. You're, that's not hard. I don't know why I mess around when I'm being serious. I just, I just goof off because I'm trying to let God deal with some of you. If this is you today with every head bowed or online and you say, preacher, pray with me. I walked with God, but I walked away. I'm going to come home tonight. And now I know why. I just... I just never gave him my will. I really kept it. I know I did. But tonight, I'm going to give it to him. Or you say, preacher, I've never given Jesus my life at all. I've never. I never even understood lordship. I don't really understand it much now, but I get it. And I want him to know that I not only recognize him as Lord, I'll follow him as Lord. If that's you in Jesus' name, with every head bowed, online, same thing. I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, wherever, even if you're sitting by yourself. And you say, preacher, include me in your prayer. Are you ready? I'm going to ask you to publicly declare that. And I'm going to, very simply, by doing one simple thing, if you want God in your life, if you really want to make him Lord so he can give you his salvation, that's a free gift. If that's you in Jesus' name, are you ready? Without any hesitation, would you just lift your hand up right now all over this place? Anybody here? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over here. God bless you. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over here. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. As I look in the back, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you guys. God bless you. Thank you over there. God bless you. God bless you over here. Who else? Anybody else? want? We're going to pray together, church, and we're going to go home. Thank you. God bless you. I saw your hand, sir. I'm going to look across the top one more time. You notice I never give you a sad story. Guys, I'm not trying to work your emotions. God bless you. I'm trying to get you to obey God because if you have something saying to you, which is the Spirit of God, get right. 
Raise your hand. Why not? That's not the devil. That's God. Start listening and acting on, his, on what you know is right and publicly declare and, and watch what he does in your life. Anybody else before we close? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you up there. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? God bless you. Thank you. I'm going to look across. Oh, thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to look across one more time. I don't want to leave you out. We're all going to pray together. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, you see all these hands. You know every one of them by name. You know how many hairs are numbered on their head. You know their comings, thank you, and their goings. You know everything, and you still want them in your family. And Father, as we come before you and declare your lordship over our lives, I thank you for your salvation that you give to us freely. It's a free gift, but we gotta give you a heart. So God, I thank you for receiving all of us that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you that nothing's too hard for you. In Jesus' name, if you lifted your hand, I want you to pray this prayer aloud with me right where you're seated. If you are here and you didn't raise your hand, I want you to pray it anyway. I'm gonna introduce you to Jesus. And if you're right with God, would you pray with us in support of all those who, there was so many hands. It's kind of cool to see how people declare God and God is like, yes! Jesus is like, calling your name before the Father in heaven right now, saying, so-and-so, 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 I told you. That's how great heaven is. Heaven's having a party right now. I, I, one of these days, I want to see that party when someone gets saved. I want to see what happens. When someone makes Jesus the Lord of their life, I want, to, I want to be in heaven one day and just say, what is that? I wonder what kind of party that is. I bet there's some good food. Would you pray this with me? Would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus, and I choose to believe he is Lord, and I choose to believe on the third day you raised him from the dead to give me a new life. So with my heart, I choose to believe, and now with my mouth, I confess, Jesus, be Lord of my life. I submit my will to your will. Now I thank you for saving me and for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Let's thank the Lord, church.